Hey guys, Mr. Klein here, and if you're like me, you probably got a drone for Christmas. Now, unlike you, I haven't gotten mine stuck in a tree, crashed it into a pond on the first flight, had it run away and land in a forest several miles away from your home, or flew it across an airport runway. So it's still in one piece, and my wife isn't angry with me yet. So even though you haven't destroyed your new investment yet, you're probably wondering how exactly a drone flies and how it's a bit different than what you might expect from an aircraft. So in this video, we'll look at the basic flight mechanics of your drone and see what makes it such an interesting aircraft to fly. So first off, you might think that your drone is a little odd for an airplane because while you see propellers, most likely four of them on your drone, they're all pointing upward and your drone has no wings. So the reason is, is because your drone isn't an airplane per se. It's a type of rotorcraft, like a helicopter, if you will. Now, most likely your drone is a quadcopter because, well, it's got four rotors. Some drones even have six or eight rotors, and for our purposes, they're going to behave the exact same way. So because a quadcopter isn't an airplane, your idea of how it flies, that model in your head, doesn't exactly work. So rotorcraft don't fly due to the lift being generated by wings. You see there's none right here, or push through the air with thrust through a propeller in the front or a jet engine or back. Rather, the propellers right here provide the lift and the thrust at the same time time. It allows the quadcopter to take off and land vertically as well as hover in place. So this seems to be a great way to get around. Rotorcraft provides some really interesting problems for engineers to make them flyable. So the biggest issue with a rotorcraft is a force that we call torque, a rotational force created by the rotor. So in order to generate lift, the rotor blades need to be quite large. And in order to rotate them fast enough, there needs to be a lot of rotational force in order to get it up and spinning. So because because you have one large rotating object on the aircraft, the fuselage or the body of the aircraft will want to rotate along with it. Now this is no good because there needs to be some sort of opposing force that keeps the fuselage from spinning along with the rotor. So there's several ways that rotorcraft solve this problem. Most helicopters, they'll have like a small rotor on the back that pushes in the opposite direction of the torque created by the rotors. Now this keeps the fuselage in place. Now, there's other methods of keeping the aircraft stable. So you can use multiple rotors of the same size rotating in opposite directions. So this arrangement causes the torque to be completely canceled out without the need of a tail rotor like most helicopters. So this can be done with two rotors on the same shaft like you might see in Russian helicopters, you know, the Kamov helicopters, or most really inexpensive RC helicopters as well. You can use rotors in multiple locations like for instance a CH-47 Chinook or you guessed it, quadcopter drones. So the arrangement of rotors on quad quadcopters as such is that there's an opposing rotor in all directions. This cancels out all opposing forces and makes quadcopters quite stable. So now that you know why there's multiple rotors, let's look at how your drone actually flies through the air. So I'm out here with two, my, two of my drones. So I have my DJI Mavic Mini and my Phantom 3. I guess I'm flexing here. And I'm going to show you with these two how exactly a quadcopter drone flies through the air. So you've heard me earlier discuss how helicopters use large rotors in order to generate enough lift and thrust to fly, but you probably notice that the rotors on these drones are much smaller than the body that you would normally think. The reason is, is that the more rotors you have, you can achieve the same amount of lift with smaller blades than you would need with one large one. Quadcopters utilize a central computer that controls how fast each of the rotors spin, and any change in speed of these rotors will move the drone however you want. So first off, if you're going to fly, any sort of movement involves asymmetrical spinning of the rotors. So so in other words, if you're going to fly forward, the rear rotors will spin faster than the front rotors, causing it to pitch forward and fly forward. Well, in order to fly backwards, you just need to do the opposite. Have the front rotors spin faster than the rear ones. So to fly side to side or adjust the roll, you utilize the same principle as flying forward or backwards, with one side of the rotor spinning faster than the other. But what about rotating in place, or yaw? If you remember earlier when I talked about how you need to counteract the torque of the rotors in order to keep a rotorcraft in place, in order to spin, you adjust the speed of the rotor spinning in the same direction. So in other words, if you want to turn clockwise, you make the clockwise spinning rotor spin faster than the counterclockwise rotors and vice versa if you want to spin counterclockwise. So how much your drone can do any pitching, rolling, or yawing depends on the power of the motors, the software controlling the motors, as well as the shape of the drone itself. So most photographic drones like DJI, Parrot, Autel, all of those are designed with 
the ease of flight and stability in mind in order to get good video footage. So their maneuverability is really, really limited. Now you can get acrobatic drones that can flip as some sort of a gimmick for relatively cheap. You might have one of those yourself. If you're into building racing drones, building a drone that can flip, perform tight loots, sliding spins, all of those are really vital and part of the design and flight processes as well. Drones with advanced sensors are getting really commonplace and you might wonder how your drone is actually able to stay in place even in spite of really windy conditions. Most drones actually do this with a set of advanced sensors that the onboard computer uses to determine its location in the world as well as delivering adjustments to the propellers to keep it in place. So this is usually done with a combination of GPS or GLONASS receivers as well as infrared and ultrasonic devices on the drone itself or even in a case of the Tello that you might have dead reckoning it keeps track of the movements from liftoff to determine where it's at. So while GPS and GLONASS receivers passively receive satellite data from the US GPS system, the Russian GLONASS network, the infrared and sonic receivers are active sensors. In other words, they send data out and then use the return data in order to determine the distance between the drones and the obstacles. And that's what they use for obstacle avoidance on DJI Mavics, for instance. So there you go. It's the basics of how your drone gets up in the air and moves about. So quadcopter drones are fundamentally different types of aircraft to a traditional airplane, and thus the mechanics of their flight are a little bit different than regular aircraft. So airplanes will use control surfaces in order to move around in the air, while quadcopter drones and other rotorcraft will use differing amounts of thrust in order to move around in the air instead. This has been an episode of Phenomenon Explained, a series of videos that explain how the universe around us operates. This video aligns to not just the next generation science standards, but also the Louisiana Student Standards for Science. This video here, well, it aligns to 6-MSPS2-2, which essentially talks about how unbalanced forces are the cause of objects going into motion rather than staying at rest. And if you enjoyed this video, click on the like button down below. And if you got any comments, go ahead and put them down there below. And thanks for watching. Boy, I hope this drone doesn't back into a tree. That would be really bad. Are you gonna do it? Are, are, you, are you, you, you gonna do it? Oh, you just missed it. Woo, come on, come back. You, you can come back now. Come on, drone, you, you can do it. Just don't hit my camera. Just, just, just don't, don't, don't hit the camera. Don't hit the camera. You're coming in really fast and, and, and. And you did not hit the camera. I mean, look how close the, the drone. It's like right there.